Okay, so got Zap with Burp Sweet running easily. So we're gonna download Jamboree, right click run with PowerShell. Now the only thing you need admin for is the Hexium install or acceleration. You can use other accelerations, I won't go into that, but with Android and Intel, you can use the Hexium install that's already built in here. If you don't have admin, you might actually still have hardware acceleration through Windows, um, but that's a different story. So once you have Hexium set up or the equivalent for AMD, the next thing you want to do is start up Burp Suite. You may also have to restart after installing the Hexium thing. Now, regardless of your broken Python environment or Java environment, whatever, it's not going to affect any of that. This is all more or less localized. There's a few instances where things aren't completely portable or localized, but they don't necessarily affect, especially when you run it from the same location. Um, now it's pulling down Burp Suite Community, it's pulling down Burp Suite Pro, it's already pulled down Java. It's already pushed the crawler configuration to help bypass Cloudflare for Burp Suite. It's pushed the upstream information for Z attack proxy, so you can use those both together. Now in the background, it's trying to pull down the certificate so that it can push it to the the ant emulator here in just a second. So right now we have a warping burp suite. We can go crazy if we want to. It actually installs it locally. So you can have this, this certificate gets installed locally. So if you want to use your embedded browser or whatever, um, you can do that. I'm going to go ahead and put the, put it on proxy mode. Next step is start ABD. So if you've ever done the Android Studio garbage or like these gross, disgusting things like Knox or Bluestacks or any of those awful things, um, this is all legit. It's all open source, whatever. It's, it's everything you need is in here. Um, what it's doing now is pulling down a tiny Python, 15 meg Python from Nougat. And it's pulling on down all the dependencies for Python that it needs for the SSL decryption and inspection for Objection and Frida, which is tools for inspecting you know, Android applications. Um, this other step is it's downloaded the command line version of the Burp Suite tools, or the, sorry, Android tools. So you don't need to install Android Studio and do all this crazy mess and figure out which images you need, whatever. This is all built, ready to go, Android 11, and it's a Pixel 2. You're good to go. Now there's other things like fingerprinting and stuff like that that we can go into when you have things like that, but a lot of a lot of things will be covered by Frida and Objection to bypass, like you know, object uh, hardware detections, things like that. And you can all do, also do that with Magix. So between the three, you can pretty much do whatever you need as far as build prop or changing the aspects of the device. The longest part of this is actually downloading the images, right? They're like three meg, three gigs or something like that. So right now we have a Java, we have a Burp, we have Python, we have all the modules we need for Frida. We're pulling down the images in the emulator. We're about to start up the emulator and be kind of good to go from there. The other part of this is just how quickly it all comes together. So instead of having to install, again, like Python, if you try to install Python, like portable Python, to make it portable, it, it's not really something you can easily do. Um, with this 15 meg NuGet version, you don't need anything like Chocolatey or you know Anaconda or any of these Windows package managers to do any of that because we're not we're not going crazy. We just need Python and a few Python modules, and we're good to go. Also, this um, this whole suite of tools does not get point picked up by EDR. Um, one of the top EDRs, probably top two, top three at least, EDRs is not detected by this software. So you basically have a full-blown emulated environment um, connectivity to and from the system with complete, you know, Python and um, Python environment to do whatever you want to do um, and have all the tools you need to do to, to futz around with stuff. So, and that's all without admin. You know, the only part you need admin for is the you know, actual emulator itself, right? This is kind of hung here. Right. 
So that doesn't traditionally take that long. Um, sometimes it'll get hung up if I'm hammering it away, hammering at it to try to run the run the tool over and over again. It'll eventually kind of throttle me. But that doesn't normally take that long. It usually takes right at I don't know three minutes, something like that. If if that. Now you can change the version you download. You can change whatever you want to change in the parameters for the command line to pull in different versions of the emulator. I have not tested other versions of emulators, especially to get root for Magisks. So I've, I haven't upgraded anything. I like having it on 11 because it's not too old. It's not too new. Um, you don't want to have the latest and greatest when you're testing software. You want to be kind of in the middle you want to be the average for a number of reasons because you want to be the average person, the average user for the software itself, and you also want to be the you have not the latest and greatest because you know the security tools and bypassing tools and all that stuff is is for older things, and the newer hotness um, security tools on the defense side are with the newer versions of Android. So just be aware of that. Let this usually let this kind of marinate for a bit before I start clicking stuff. Um, I think this will turn kind of yellow when it's like phoning home. Um, you have all the access to install whatever apps you want, log in with a, a lame Google account, and kind of do whatever you need to do. I've let it sit here for a second. Usually let it sit for a second, kind of marinate. On, on slower machines, you might want to wait a little bit longer for stuff to kind of populate. You can look at the CPU usage, whatever. Um, but honestly, it doesn't make that big of a deal. You can just kind of go hammer, hammer. So now we're, we have a full blown environment. You can stop here, do whatever you want, play around. The next step is getting root. And that's when you start getting into shenanigans, right? It's pulling down magisks. It's setting it up for us like a temporary install. And then you have to point it at a different thing here in just a bit. So we're going to install, then select a patch file. Then we're going to go to the hamburger menu, go to downloads, and then do the fake boot, and then say, let's go. And then go click back to the window, and then click enter. So now it's pushing, it's setting everything up to install Magisk and get it set up for root. Give it a few seconds to marinate a little bit. Starting it back up. Now what I like to traditionally do is um, reboot one more time because Magisk wants to do some extra things to, to get it itself happy. You probably don't have to do this, but I do it just, just in case. This run magisk. I'll do click OK, and then it will actually restart the restart the system again. So after this reboot, we'll be able to push the push the birth certificate for SSL depending, and that'll be the last piece we need to really bring it all together, give us all the visibility we need. So we have our certificate here from, downloaded from Burp Suite, but now we need to push it to our emulator. And our emulator, we just now got root. It's all happy. You can come in here, update the app if you want. Um, you don't necessarily need this. Um, you just need some super user at some point. So you, you could install a different super user, play around with whatever you want to play around with. But in general, all your anti-root stuff is going to be included and not trigger anything in there. So get your magic's installed. Now we want to push the certificate from Burp Suite. And this is warning you to say, hey, you need to set up the the proxy at some point. So now that we have Brute, we're going to grant the permissions to install the certificate tool for Magix. And it's going to do all this magic to convert in the PowerShell. It's going to convert um, this the proxy, the Burp Suite certificate to the right name, and then it's going to automatically push it and make everything happy. So now we're ready to reboot. I like to do the shutdown EBD because that sends like a full blown 
shutdown command instead of a restart through the like little UI here over the right. So this should be our last reboot. We've installed the certificate. We've got no errors here. So this will be our last reboot and we're kind of off to the races now. And if you do have problems with like a specific app, there's other things like uh, ADB Logcat Usually what happens with me if an app crashes is because it's trying to spam a bunch of connections that are being blocked or in some manner not getting all the way through or getting blocked or they're getting SSL stripped or something. So that's one reason why you'll have that. This is to fix unauthorized devices. Usually I just nuke the whole thing and start over. That doesn't happen as much anymore. It used to happen a fair amount. Um, so let's go ahead and set up the wireless. We go down here to the configuration the network and depending on your different version it's a bit wonky to get to the actual settings so we're going to the cog and then this little modify this little pencil button then we go to proxy manual then 10.10.0.2.2 .10 and port 8080 now there's command line arguments to the emulator that f that you can force a proxy but it's very unstable this for, for whatever reason works better then setting the command line arguments, um, you get weird uh, things happen when you use the uh, when you use the command line arguments. So now we have HTTPS, so we know our certificate is pushed. We have HTTP, we know we're getting traffic because we already have HTTPS. So th it's HTTP first, you'll see. Then once you push the certificate, you'll get HTTPS. And then for as an example, we'll install these base APKs. One of them is AndGoat, which is basically a tool for testing. SSL certificate depending and making sure you've got it set up right. You've got other things in here like um, kill ADB if it's hung or if you've had to close this out without doing anything. If you just close this out, you'll have ADB running in the background. Um, star pound is for Active Directory shenanigans. And then Neo4j is part of the star pound stuff. So if you want to audit your Active Directory, just click these three buttons and you'll get a beautiful uh, setup for Bloodhound. The The newest version is much, much faster, so I definitely recommend using the Docker for that. But this is good if you don't have admin and you don't have the ability to install Docker. I'm at Levin Evans, image, AI image, PyCharm is the IDE, it's not portable at all. And here's a dbloat UI tool, which will work with a standard uh, ARM7 setup because um, the binary is ARM but it won't really work for, um, it's a menu based deep load tool that you can click around and uninstall stuff, but it doesn't, it doesn't work with this because it's x86. Anyways, we've got our um, test applications. There's these different ones. Game Guardian is good for like uh, in memory em emulation or memory editing. You can go in there and replace, you know, your gold with 999. So sometimes you don't even need to see the traffic. If you can just edit the values and then the server accepts it or the local system accepts it, um, you're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and click the Frida anti-root. You can start objection manually. Um, this bus basically does everything for you. So it pulls the Frida down, it pushes it to the emulator, it starts it up, and then gives you a nice list here to, to filter out. So we're going to goat. And this is the a goat tester, Android goat. So it just started Frida with the root bypass and the root detection bypass and the um, SSL depending stuff. So we should see up in here, we should see HTTP test fire and then uh, two more for HTTPS. So we're good there. We already know that this is the big one. So there's your HTTPS SSL depending. So you'll see it down in here. You're pretty much off to the races. Now the newest part I've added is the ability to do um, burp with zap. Now you can go in here and manually set that under connections and upstream proxy server and just set it to 8081 localhost. But if you'd want to get, go ahead and just start out with that instead of clicking start burp suite community, if you want to start with zap, go ahead and click, you know, burp suite zap or burp suite community with zap. It'll put those settings in the configuration for you. So you don't have to worry about setting up any of the proxy settings. So if you scroll down here, 
you'll see you know localhost 8081 so burp suite is set up for zap and it's forwarding its traffic to zap and then we have zap here we'll kind of just shove it over here so you can see the sites coming in right now we have demo test fire and then down here we have demo test fire now you might see um, what I've noticed is the the connection will get weird sometimes and you have to go in here and click under here and I have to click the disconnect to reconnect so I'll click this um, disconnect or if it's not connected I'll click this again and it'll re reconnect and then when you're doing um, the SSL or the, the proxy extra proxy stuff it'll say just sign in all you have to do is click um, use this network as is It'll have a little drop down that says sign into this network and just say ne use this network as is if there's any disconnect or anything like that. So now you're good to go. You're connected. Um, where is the app at? We'll do, we'll do the HTTP. Yep, it's still running in the background. So we've got HTTP, HTTPS, and certificate pinning all good to go and happy. That's pretty much it. Um, I've explained all the other stuff. Uh, ADB Logcat's good for kind of troubleshooting what's going on. And that's pretty much it. I hope you use this to hack away at Android stuff. It's all broken. Take it easy.